Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this tutorial I'm going to show how to use Git within Eclipse to create a repository and push to that repository. We're going to start by working with a local repository and then move to working with uh, GitHub. So to begin with, I've created a basic Java project. This doesn't have to be a Java project, it could be any project you like, Android, C, whatever. And inside of this I've got the files that I you know, might be starting with. I've initially got here a main file that's a class. All it does is it instantiates a sales data object, calls a, sim a simple method down here, and then calls data.display, which calls into this function here in my data object. All it does at the moment is prints a message to the screen. Throughout the tutorials later on, we're going to be editing these files and seeing how they change. But for the moment, it, for the time being, if I run this, we can see down here it simply prints out the two messages from this file and then executes sale data and prints out that message. Nothing special. Okay, so now what happens if other people want to work on this? Well, I need to start sharing this. I need to start working with Git. Um, other tools such as SVN or CSV would also work. Uh, this is also about Git, so let's see what happens. So I'm first going to right click on my project and then go down to Team and then Share Project team share project. Here I then have the git provider and then I select what do I want to do with it. Well I've got to first create a local repository to work with. So I'm going to create. Uh, the default path is probably fine for accessing that and I'm going to give it a name. So let's call this sales tool repository. And just for fun, I'm going to call it local sales tool repository, just so we know what we're working on. You probably don't need the word local in yours. I'm not going to bother providing a path within the repository, that's fine. And I'll just say finish because this whole project is going to be in the, repo the repository. Now what just happened? Hmm. We don't really see any changes going on, so what I want to do is I want to bring up some extra views. So I'm going to go to Window, Show Views, and then go down to Other. Under, well, first off I'm going to go under Git. So up here under Git, I want to look at the repositories and the staging area is actually going to be handy later, so I'm going to bring that up. And the one other one I want is the perspective, the history. So under Team, select History. So let's start by looking here under my repositories. What have I done? Well, I created my local sales repository, uh, tool repository, and now I'm working with that. We can see here that I've got branches. Well, I've got nothing really going on here at the moment, and I've got no remotes, no references. There's not much of anything. So what I need to do is I need to do my very first commit. So go back into my file here. Now I happen to have already up here my toolbar. I'm going to show you how to get this Git toolbar. If you go to uh, Windows and then customize perspective. We're not yet showing the git ability so you have to come under command group availability and then put a check mark in git. Click OK and that's now going to give you the git menu here that you can work with plus the toolbar here at the top that I like. So I've got my files all ready to go uh, all ready to be checked into my repository Oops, I'm showing you something here. I just tried saving the file, but it tells me, hey, well, that does, file no longer exists. It's actually been moved. I had these files open to begin with, so I'm going to have to close them here. And now when I open them again, it's going to be in a different place. If I right click on this and I go to properties, we can see here that it's now moved to under my git subfolder. So it's actually moved my project. That's okay. So I'll move those up, save those, and now what I want to do is I want to commit. So I could go here, right click, go to team, and then I could go to commit. I'll try that to begin with. I give it a message, initial check-in of sales tool, provide an author and so forth. Um, this email address of using GitHub may be publicly available, so you might want to use one that you don't really care about. So now these are the files that I can choose to check in. I like this button here on the right, 
add them all. Except I don't really want to add them all. I want to add most of them, so I'm going to go through and remove those I don't. There's no sense in checking in my compiled class files. They'll just be a pain to manage merges on later, so I'm going to keep those out of my repository. So to begin with, I'm just going to say don't check in the class files, but check in everything else. So I've got my project files, the class path project, and some settings. Plus I've got all my source files. You might also have resources like text files, HTML files, documents, or even images. So I'm going to say commit. Now what's happened is you notice down here under my local repository, under branches local, I have this thing called master. Master is the main line that we're building on. So master is now created. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to say, well, let's push this up. If I go to my web page again, hit F3, oops, sorry, no, I haven't done there yet, I've not yet created anything online. So nothing has yet gone on to uh, my GitHub repository. So if I go under history here, if I right click on my uh, project and I think there's a show in button, which may be just off the screen, let me bring this up a wee bit. So right click on that, try it again, right click, show in history. And now we've got here on the right hand side all the history of my project. This is going to be critical. We're going to really want to look at this a lot later on. But let's start off by going up to the remote server. So I want to go into here and I want to say I want to create a remote. Now how am I going to do that? Well, I need to first go into GitHub. So I'm going to bring up my browser. I've gone to github.com. I've already logged in with the user ID. They're free to create. And I'm going to create a new repository. So I'm going to use this button down here, New Repository. And we can pick a name for it. Let's call this Sales Tool. I can provide a description if I want. I'm going to make it public so it's free. And then create the repository. So we can see here, and I've created the repository. There's nothing in it. What I really want is I want this URL. So I'm going to copy this. This is the way that I'm going to get access into my GitHub uh, repository from within Eclipse. So I'm going to back in Eclipse, creating a remote reference, a remote repository to connect to. I'm going to name it Origin. That's the standard name of what we do talk about the upstream repository. So we'll leave with Origin. I'm going to change the URL here. So it brings in whatever I had copied already. It get, fills in the host and the extra pieces of information from that. I need to put in my user ID and my password. I can choose to save this in secure storage, so I don't have to type it in every time. So I'll click Finish. And now we've got this saved here. Now, this ref mappings is actually quite interesting. I'm going to want to add one here. So I could go through Add and type it in. That's a little more uh, harder than I want. I'm going to go through the Advanced, because it happens to fill in everything for me. So I say, what source ref do I want it to be, i.e., what do I want to work on? I want to work on this master. This master branch is really the one I'm going to be pushing. So I select Master here. Destination, it automatically fills in the master there. And Add Spec. So that's really the only thing I want to push up to my repository. Uh, save specification in the origin configuration. Sounds good. Click Finish. And I'm going to click Save here. I could say Save and Push, but let's do it in two steps. So I'm going to first save. I'll expand Remote here. We see here we have the origin, which is good. That's the one I really want to work with. And then I can, for example, push. I can go down to this one with the red arrow pointing to it. I could right click and say Push. Let's try that. Push. And the Remote Push. So it's done this. Pushed to local uh, sales-origin. So it pushed to the local, the origin rather of it. I'll click OK. I'm going to switch back to my web browser. Hit F5 to reload. And we'll see that we've actually pushed something up to the server. So Brian Fraser, four minutes ago, pushed sales tool. So I'll go into this. I can see all the files that I've just checked in. My source, CA, and here's my main file. Just like we had down on my program. Okay, so now I've done that. Now, there's a few other things we're going to want to do. Let's just make another change and walk through that once more. This isn't how we're normally going to make changes. We'll see how later on to do that. Uh, but let's just put something in here. Test one. 
I'm going to run it to make sure it works. Oh, we got an error. So cancel that. What have we got? Well, print ln we want. I'm going to run that with control F11. And we can see here it actually ran. It's fantastic. Now I want to check this in. So I can use up here, I can check in. And I'm going to say uh, first change. In fact, normally I'd add something more descriptive, so add a simple output change. I could say commit and push, but I'm going to work on just two separate stages here. I'm going to say commit. It now pushes it up to my local repository. So we can see here that the latest thing pushed up was that. And I don't yet have it on, if I open up references, this is the, um, yeah, no, that's the references there. So the remote doesn't yet have that. So I can say, I can right click on this, and I'm going to say push branch. So the remotely one, figured one, and it pushes it up. Here we can see the different changes being pushed, and that's now gone up. So let's check it. If I go and I hit F5, this file reloads, and we can see here that indeed my change actually made it to the server. So that's a very simple change after having checked in the project. Now, we notice that it kept asking for, do you want, what files do you want to submit? And in here we see on my project uh, explorer that there's uh, not listing those extra bin files that we had. I'm going to switch to my navigator tab. If you don't have this, you can go to window, show view, go to other, and then say nav, navigator, and select that, and it'll come up. So under navigator, it shows me the actual files that are present. It's got this bin folder with a question mark, meaning that it doesn't actually know. It's not being checked into Git. So I'm going to right click on my whole bin folder. I'm going to go down to Team, and I'm going to say Ignore. So now it's going to ignore that file. Note that it actually created a git, a dot git ignore, and in it it simply lists all the files that are going to be ignored. So you can add in here if you've got any other generated files you want to ignore. Now this is a file like any other. So let's go ahead and commit that to the repository. So I'm going to um, go up here and I'm going to say commit added ignore commit that in and I'm going to push. So now I can just go here push changes upstream. When it says upstream it kind of knows the, it always defaults to going to the origin. It knows the upstream location. And so now it's going to push that up to the appropriate repository online. And the next time I go to check in it's not going to ask, hey, do you want to check in those files you've asked to ignore? You want to set it up the ignore carefully because then all of your team members will also get the same ignore file. And that's handy because then nobody else inadvertently checks in, for example, a half meg of generated um, exe files. Okay, so what have we seen? Well, we saw how to, um, using the tool or team, and then the share project, we saw how to share it with a local repository, so in here. And we saw how to push that up to the remotes. Now as it turns out, we see here that it's actually tracking the loading. Um, if you want more information, check the comments below. It'll give you a link to other Git tutorials in this sequence.